Hello universe, this is Elfie. I'm just going live again for day three of my Facebook Live challenge that I've taken up with Zulu Flow Zion. Um, just uh, basically going for it here, just picking up different topics and, uh, and talking them through. So one of the ones I wanted to talk about today was five unconventional ways to open up the heart or to open up the heart chakra. And uh, I'm just doing some experimenting with live over the next few days and, and just seeing you know different ways in which I can uh, connect with you guys and different ways I can provide some value. So um, basically I'm gonna try just having some notes as well. So I've got a couple of things to work off here. And um, yeah, basically, well, ironically, I came up with this uh, this idea to do this yesterday when a good friend of mine, Bridget, Bridget, posted an article up, and I'll post that article up there for you guys to read as well to refer off. So I just wanted to speak off some of those points because it was such a profound article that had so much good value in it that I just had to uh, basically share it with you guys. So um, for those familiar, not familiar with the, the spiritual circles, the, it references the heart chakra, which is essentially the, the central chakra point, And you know, it's right smack in the middle of, of where um, the flow of, of basically the bottom chakra to the top chakra. So it's, it's really heart based, it's really emotion based. And, um, you know, not really in the gut and, and certainly not in the mind. Um, but it essentially allows us to really feel into things more. Um, and hey, thanks for coming on board, David, Ivan, and Jonathan Ringelstein. Nice seeing you, man. And thanks for that comment. Um, so basically, I'm going to kick into it. So um, they talk about you know pain, and this is one something I've been really feeling a lot of recently uh, is just heartbreak and and pain. So uh, you know that it it is either leads to a wake up call or it simply hurts, right? But um, it can never lead to to believing that being human is easy. So something that I did is over the past sort of six, eight months, I really started f like falling into the trap of feeling uh, like cruisy and complacent in life and uh, just sort of had all my things sorted, had all my, my stuff together and, uh, and, and really just um, got complacent. So, um, you know, that through heartbreak, it's one of those amazing opportunities that we can either sit in the pain or we can actually deal with that pain and turn it into some kind of transformations, you know, some kind of exponential growth. The amount of beautiful growth I've had thanks to the pain I've been through um, most recently is is profound. Like, I wish I could give you guys a, a taste of that. Maybe I can on a future live cast if I start crying or something. But for now, I'm just taking it day by day and I'm just going to talk through the lessons that I've had so far. Um, so by the way, this is an Ask Me Anything as well. So if you have any questions, any uh, anything you want to throw my way, I'm on here for the next uh, you know the next six or seven minutes. So uh, ask me questions, preferably obviously to do with this whole idea of emotional um, opening and, and opening up our heart chakra and being able to really connect with empathy and compassion. So these are these are five unconventional ways in which we can do that. So the first one is to actually let our heart break over and over again, and it sounds so. Ah, so scary is, um, and but it, it is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And there's a beautiful quote here by Andrew Harvey that says, "If you are really listening, if you're truly awake to the poignant beauty of the world, your heart breaks regularly. In fact, your heart is made to break. Its purpose is to bust open again and again, so that we can hold, so that it can hold ever more wonders." So um, yeah, like I. I've experienced the deepest heartbreak of my life. I, I, I would, I before would never recommend that on anybody. But the amount of um, understanding and you know really getting it when I hear other people now, like people who've been through some kind of deep, deep hurt or tragedy, I feel it. I'm like, man, I, I'm with you. I get where you're coming from. It really has has increased my level of connectedness with people in the world. So I would, I would recommend like letting your heart break, let it happen. Um, you know, maybe try it with something small and just sort of feel into, you know, the, the world that we do live in, the cushy little first world country we live in compared to other people who struggle just to put like a piece of bread on the table at the end of the day. So the second idea is to brain, is to heart storm with a child. So the idea of brainstorming, we're all familiar with the idea of just like getting together and just coming up with a bunch of ideas and spitballing them and trying to get something cool and new uh, and, and connecting these different dots to create something new. But the idea of heart storming, so, you know, basically a method of soul questioning where you get a bunch of people together and you're in a, in a group and you're contributing creative questions spontaneously to each other. It's a beautiful process. I've done things similar to that in the past, but I definitely could do with a lot more heart storming. And to do that with a child really just brings a whole different 
um, perspective on life. Because I mean, they you know they they do see things differently. They haven't been tainted by the world. They haven't been shaped by their environment as much as us. So they see things a lot purer and clearer than we do. And just welcoming um, Charlotte and Damien and Tracy onto the onto the chat. So welcome, hello Zulu Flow Sion, the the man I've uh, partnered up with over these next seven days to do a, a video every day. This man is the man when it comes to mindfulness and finding flow and peak performance. Friend him, check out his videos. I learned an amazing breath, breath exercise uh, from him today, and I've started doing that already. It got me out of my bed. I was just sitting in my bed under my um, cruisy, cushy electric blanket and, and just did a simple breathing exercise, and bang, I had so much energy I had to get out of bed and do it. So thanks for that, brother, and, and looking forward to seeing more of your videos. Um, so the third one is to transform the mundane into mythos. And this is like the story of my personality is that I'm always needing to like find the new thing. Those who know me will know that uh, I'm always trying to find the new thing and, 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 and get on to uh, the next exciting opportunity. Uh, so basically, if we can transform what things that are seemingly mundane, uh, and they say in the article, into significant myth. I love that, significant myth. Being able to take a grain of sand and be able to find the same joy in that as the moment you first fell in love, um, you know that that is that will transform one's experience of their heart. And 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 for me personally, it's definitely allowing me to to not have to seek the best and, and most amazing experiences and to be able to find the joy in the everyday. So the fourth one is um, the pr to practice the Zen of fearlessness. This is cool. So the Zen of fearlessness is the radical acceptance. Thank you, sister. And nice to see you on like literal sister. My sister's come on board right now. Um, uh, the, the beautiful part of this is that the Zen of fearlessness is a radical acceptance that the universe is a scary place and even more radical acceptance that so what right yes it's crazy it's changing it's ever morphing we don't know what's going to happen every moment and what's coming up next and that's that's just going to get faster and faster guys if you look up the singularity it's going to get faster and faster and faster so the only option rather than clinging on to our stability and clinging on to our safety is to be fearless and to practice that so you know, fearlessness is not the rejection of fear. I love they say this. It's not the rejection of fear. It's the it is intimacy with fear. And you know, those of you who know me well, I'm I'm all a fan of intimacy. So being intimate with fear is probably far out. Something that would be one of the scariest things for me to ever do. I don't know about you guys. Like, what? How, how does it feel? What do you think of the idea of getting intimate with fear? Um, just pop a couple of things in there. So, hello, Lara. And yes and no. Great. Um, so the last, the final one, guys, before we finish up, I've got a couple of minutes left. Please, if you have any questions, this is always an Ask Me Anything. I will do my best to give you the most straight answer I can give, or I will simply say no. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, answer your question. I've, I've committed to an Ask Me Anything, so go ahead. Um, and the fifth one is to develop your own meta morality. So this is a bit of a tricky one. So Joshua Green's term coined this term where it's a kind of thinking that enables groups with conflicting moralities to live together and prosper. So we all know that there's these different groups out there that are so completely different in their ideology and their, and their, their point of view. You couldn't hope to actually have them get along based off their actual ideology. So the key is if each of us individually can step up and, and essentially take on this meta morality, take on this perspective that we can get our own, like I think it's getting our own intuition out of the way to enable that, that previously we were biologically programmed, they enabled us to get along with our tribe. If we were able to cooperate with people, we would get along well. Um, and people would get together, obviously, with different different belief systems and different perspectives. And it works really well in tribe. It works really well when it comes to your small group or community or your family or church or whatever, um, or your social group. But then when you get these different disparate groups, they can conflict quite heavily. So if we can realize that that's just a function of our intuition, it's a function of, of, of a biological system that wasn't designed to deal with um, being able to speak with people across the other side of the world instantly, being able to affect change across the world instantly. Um, so it's, it's an outdated system, we need a new one, and this meta morality really does seem like it. So. Um, that's it guys. I think I'm, I'm at 10 minutes. Um, I just wanted to actually one other final shout out is, you know, personally last night I went and supported Eyal, um, a fellow Tantra teacher, beautiful man, love his work, one of the most knowledgeable people I've 
ever met around Tantra. So if you are wanting to discover more about how to, like I say, create more intimacy in your everyday life or in your relationships, and you're in Melbourne, um, he has got an event coming up, definitely recommend it. I'll, I'll post a link in the description below. And uh, I'm looking forward to your, to your comments, guys. Thank you very much, David Stewart. Looking forward to seeing you, man, at a, a magic show soon. If you're going to do one, let me know. Um, what's it look like in action, the final one? So it would, wow, that's a very good point. Um, I would say it looks like, you know, being able to understand that, that, that you know, we've got two different groups of people. Um, we have different belief systems, but perhaps we can find a midpoint, a common ground that will enable us to both get along. It, obviously, it'd be quite hard when you've got two people of extreme different uh, religious groups, but that's an end game. It's, it's about the next step, the next step. You know, how do you get along with people that you think might, like a group of people that might be, you might be too cool for? You know, just, just bringing it, chunking it back down to our everyday life. How do we actually implement that? Start, you know, start hanging out with other tribes that are not people you naturally uh, feel affinity for, so that at least we could gain a get a sense of empathy with that and and feel into where they're at. Um, and then I think that would give us a sense of that. That's just I'm just riffing on that, man. So I hope that that answers it pretty well. If you've got any ideas, guys, on on how we can um, develop our own meta morality, I'd love to hear it below and just get a chat going. Um, yeah, and Ivan, yeah, so seeing you last night, man, and. Uh, you know, catching up with Janelle and, and the rest of the crew was uh, quite a transformative and healing experience. So very, very grateful to you all. Love all your faces. Take care, guys, and uh, catch you around. Stay awesome. See ya.